Hello, Thousand Pound Pig here, and I'm going to be talking about some Smite. I'm going to be talking about the meta of Smite. And every once in a while when a god is released or some huge item has been introduced in the game, or in this case a whole freaking new map, the meta changes. And when the meta changes, people go in game and they don't even realise it, and then suddenly everyone is raging at them, because they're not being the most efficient as what they could be. So this video is to help with that, aimed at the more casual player, not the professional player or anything crazy. Now there is five different roles in Smite of course, five versus five in Conquest, and I want to break it down one by one, but before that I'll just talk about the map. The map is just how it used to be almost, just different graphical things. There's more animations for the jungle camps, it is more clear what side is chaos, what side is order, what side is a soul lane and what is a jewel lane. The jewel lane it has a nice beach, it's pretty beautiful, it has, even has some crabs on the beach. Soul lane has a lava field spilling out onto it, while middle lane seems to be remained untouched. All the jungle mobs have a new model, except for maybe the furies. There's ninja ogres, magic ogres, and just, I don't know, tough ogres. Oh, there's also the purple ogres. They are the new buff. They give you a bit of attack speed and power, and that is on the jewel lane. The thing about this map is that the jungle camps are always on the same side of the jungle, so you won't get confused. This means starting positions are always the same. So just be careful when you're in the middle lane. Don't go into the right side jungle and take the speed buff from the Mercury. I did that, and oh, he was angry. I really should have been on the other side of the jungle. So now I'll talk all about the gods. First is the middle lane, a Kukulkan. So the first god I'm playing as is Kukulkan. He's a mage, so he does a lot of magic power. He has mana. When you start, go to the jewel side of the map. Help them with red buff. They will help you. You get red buff, and you go to your lane. They will go get their own buff, and they will head to their own lane. But as long as you get that red buff, you can do a lot more damage and clear the waves a little bit faster at the start. As for items to build, a lot of mages start out with either Vampiric Shroud, Bancroft's Talent, or Book of Toth. It depends on the god you choose. Some gods really benefit from Bancroft's Talent, such as Anubis. Isis is really good with it as well. While Kukulkan, he really benefits from Book of Toth because of his passive. His passive is something like, the more mana you have, the more damage you do. And then get boots, either Shoes of the Magi or Shoes of Focus. For Kukulkan, I would probably get Shoes of the Magi. Because I like doing a lot of damage with him, I don't really think he needs cooldown. He seems to have some mana issues in this patch, but just note that Shoes of the Magi doesn't have magical penetration with it now. That's similar to the physical form of that, which is Warrior Tabby. Warrior Tabby doesn't have physical penetration as well. And then Bancroft's Talent or Cronus Pennant, again it depends on the god. If you haven't got Bancroft's Talent, get it there because it helps you with a lot of lifesteal so you can sustain yourself a bit more. Cronus Pennant, a lot of gods depend on cooldown such as Janus and Isis. And then eventually, somewhere later on in the game, most mages grab Rod of Tahuti. It's just it's just such a staple of mages. It's a huge magical power boost. It's like physical damage dealers get Deathbringer, mages get Rod of Tahuti. And also, get some wards. You know, learn how to ward. You have to try and protect yourself because you, there's a jungle on both sides. If you don't ward, you're just going to get ganked over and over and over. But if I could summarize the middle role in one word, it would be positioning. Always think about positioning when you're in the middle lane, either positioning thanks to the jungle or based on the other god. Like, Isis is really good for that, so some gods are really good in the early game and they tend to drop off in the middle to late game. Anubis and Isis are really good in the early game, so don't be afraid to stand back and let some minions through it to get your tower. You can't win all the early games. Oh, I should say now that once the tower hits a minion, that means you lose the gold, which is the same as what it was before the patch, but now you also lose the experience. So there's extra reason to keep them out of the tower. Next is Thor, the jungler. Just like the last meta, you're with the Solana in that jungle. You either get speed buff for yourself with the Solana's help, or you help the Solana get their blue and then you go to the lane. Once you're both in the lane, you hang around there until you're level 4 or 5. And then just go back to base. On the way back to base you can get the back furies if you want, or just teleport straight back to base, buy some items and then start your usual jungle route. While you are in the lane with the soul lane, just keep an eye on the other jungler. If you can kill them, you can counter jungle a bit, and that's a huge deal at the early game. If you can't kill them, then just keep an eye on them. You usually want to leave the lane at the same time as them. As for the build, junglers always choose Bumper's Mask, it's just a great item, it heals yourself, keeps that sustain, and it also means if you are with a teammate near a jungle camp, then you get a lot of experience and gold, and so do they. That's the most efficient way to split up the money when you do clear jungle camps. So if you are approaching a jungle camp, click on the map so your teammates know who are nearby it. 
they should be looking at the map as well, but you can drag the jungle camp closer to them so they can get that extra experience and gold. And then Ninja Tabby, like I said before, Warrior Tabby doesn't have the penetration now, so it kind of sucks. Ninja Tabby almost all the time now. And then most junglers choose either Jotun's Wrath for some cooldown, uh, attack speed, Fatalis, I love it, it also gives you some movement speed. And if they are steamrolling the other team, then Heartseeker. Heartseeker is a pretty risky move because you need to kill minions for it to stack up to 60 or something. And if you die, then it gets cut in half. So you need to be able to hold on to it. It's really good on Thor because he has two great escapes. So just, if you do get it, make sure you can escape from the battles and make sure you can actually get it to the max stacks. Then Shift his shield, Thor loves it. Fatalis, Executioner, that's what junglers usually do. And then junglers seem to split off in two directions. They either choose either Titan's Bane for penetration or Kinsase. Kinsase is for the assassins which attack really fast, such as Osiris and Kali. Kinsase is known as the tank killing item. It's not as powerful as what it used to be, but it's still very powerful, so either go the penetration route or Kinsase. As far as actives, Hand of Gods, it's almost required for junglers. If you don't get it, then you're going to have a hard time clearing a lot of camps, especially in the early game. And then there's this new item, Achilles Spear, which I think is going to be great for junglers. I'll read it out to you. Upon activation, you gain 30% attack speed, 35% lifesteal, and 30% movement speed for 5 seconds. You take 30% additional damage from all sources while this is active. So it's basically like a steroid. Some gods have it, some gods don't have it naturally. Artemis has one naturally. Mercury has one. And Achilles Spear, I think that will stack on top of those steroids. So just steroids on steroids, dog. But this is going to be great for a lot of junglers. Because they know how to gank, they know where to gank. And the problem is, if you get this item as a laner, like solo, middle, or in the dual lane, you activate this, and then you can get ganked from behind, you, you never know. But while you're in the jungle, you're in control of your own fate. You know what's around you, you know what's in the jungle usually. So you activate that, then you gank someone, get the kill, and as soon as they realize that you've used it, they're dead. Now, no matter how good of a jungler you are, you will always get the complaint that you need to gank more. Personally, I think there's three different types of junglers. There's the aggressive one, and they, they gank a lot, they get a lot of kills too. They are constantly harassing, they're so annoying. There's their supportive one, which they go from camp to camp, they never really miss one. And they drop buffs for their dual lane and their solo lane, and they always make sure the middle lane knows when they're at the red buff. As a jungler, you try and drop the red buff and leave it for your middle lane. Unless the middle lane is dead, then just give that to whoever. Give it, give it for yourself if you want. The best buff for the jungler is a speed buff because it lets you move around faster, of course. One moment you could be in the dual lane, the next moment you could be in the solo lane. Assassins are usually very maneuverable gods, so it really helps with them. And then finally, there's a defensive jungler. This seems to happen a lot in casual conquest, where your team just can't seem to hold one versus one in any lane. And as soon as you get there, they're already dead. So you're basically just holding the lane up and defending the tower. So you do that in each lane. It's it's not great, but just relax a bit. Because if you don't gank, then the game is not lost. It, it really does help, but there's four other people which can gank, okay? Third is a solo laner. I chose Hercules because he's just really strong at the moment as well. A lot of people are saying the Bruiser meta is back, which I don't know about that. Guan Yu is powerful. Guan Yu and Asara are some of the best solo laners at the moment. They start off with either Death's Toll, Frostbound Hammer, Ruinforged Hammer, or the Stone of Gaia. Death's Toll Hammer and Boots, that's kind of boring. You know, get that if you're not really confident with these other builds. Frostbound Hammer is good for if you want to be really aggressive in the start, if you want to invade and you want to slow them down. It's also good if you are if you know that you'll be in the soul lane against a god which doesn't have an escape. And you can just hit them with your basic attack and that automatically slows them down. At level 1 you have 1500 gold and you can afford rank 2 of Frostbound Hammer which has that passive which slows them down. Ruinforged Hammer, get that if you're against a physical god, it has a lot of physical protection and it gives you a bit of power. Stone of Gaia is good against mages because it gives you a lot of health. And then Warrior Tabby, bruisers don't do that much damage, they attack slowly so it helps if they do more power in that rather than just attack faster. Then Jotun's Wrath, Ruinforged Hammer and Stone of Gaia if you haven't already got it yet. A lot of bruisers are really utility focused, I would say all of them are. So just get Jordan's Wrath. And if you're just getting beaten, then you might want to get the other, either Stone of Gaia or Ruin Forge Hammer, whatever you don't have already, just so you can survive a bit more, and your team can get there in time. And then either Jotun's Wrath, Witch Blade, or Spirit Robe. Once again, the cooldown is great for Jotun's Wrath, 
Witchblade actually gives you a bit of physical protection. It doesn't give you that movement speed like it used to, but you know, some more physical protection, which is great, especially if you're against a really strong soul lander such as Asaurus or maybe Bakasura. And Spirit Robe is just amazing at the moment. 40 physical protection, 40 magical protection, 15% cooldown, which is great for bruises, like I said. And whenever you are hit with a card crowd control ability such as a stun, you gain a 15% damage mitigation, so you die a bit slower. Great item, mainly used for being tanky instead of the cooldown. As far as actives, Hand of Gods, it helps you clear the waves faster, you don't need it though. Some bruisers really do need it though. And then wards. If you are a really tough bruiser such as Hercules, you can usually survive if you get ganked because he's, he's Hercules, he'll survive. No, uh, buy some wards and just protect yourself, just to be safe, unless you're confident of escaping every time. Gwony is really good at this, you know, that damn horse. You know, you gank him, even if the place is warded, he'll just ignore it. You gank him and he'll just ride his horse to safety. Now if mages are about positioning, then I would say soul laners are about sustain. Where it's not just about the amount of damage you can do, it's about how long you can stay in the lane. And if you can stay in the lane, then you put pressure on their tower. If you can kill them, once again more pressure on that tower. And then the middle lane has to rotate, the assassin has to go over towards you. The duo will leave their lane. So just be a huge headache and learn to beat your opponent, one versus one. A lot of it is counter building, learning how to counter build your gods, so it's a bit like middle lane I guess. But don't be afraid to ask for help from your jungler. And also don't be afraid to ask questions. A lot of people in Smite, they don't ask questions, they think it's bad or something. It's, you know, a quest ask questions and you'll learn something and you can try it again in the next match if you lose. On the soul lane of the map there is a fire giant. The fire giant doesn't spawn at the start of the map, instead he does spawn at 10 minutes in. He's inside some weird closet and then he just bursts out. Really cool animation. And he's also got a bit of a buff. He doesn't have a lot more health, but they have made him more a bit like uh, a bit of a raid boss, which is what everyone wanted. Instead of just throwing rocks at you, he'll keep doing that, but he also has a line attack, which once you see that on the ground, get out of that or you will get knocked up. He also has some spots which if you stand on that, you know, you get hurt. But that knock up is kind of huge because you could be a support or you could be just doing a lot of damage as a carrier or something and then you get knocked up in the air and then you're doing nothing, you're, you're floating basically, so just be careful of that. Also if you're tanking it, don't tank it while your teammates are behind you. Tank it so the fire giant is facing you and your teammates are not behind you and your teammates are on the other side. That way if he does do that line attack, it will only affect one person. Next is a support role, I chose Sylvanas, great support at the moment, he heals a ton and it seems like he's got two items made just for him at the moment. At the start of the match, head to the red buff, you'll meet the middle laner there, drop that for them, make sure you tank it so you take a bit of the damage, and then go to the purple buff and give that to your carry. Unfortunately the mana buff isn't there, I love that mana buff, I love stealing it. But the purple buff is basically attack speed and a bit of power, and that's great to give to your hunter. When you're at the start and you're tanking those jungle camps, you don't need to tank both of them. You know, you can juggle it around a bit, let your middle laner tank just a tiny bit while you tank most of it. Also, if your carry has a lot of life steals such as Death's Toll at the start of the game, then let him tank for a little bit longer. He can sustain himself better than you can, at least at the start of the game. Now there's usually two routes to go as a support. If you want money, get Watcher's Gift. If you want to be aggressive, you want to bully them out of the lane, you don't want them to get experience and gold, get Mark of the Vanguard, that really helps in the early game. And then from there, Reinforced Boots is great if you go for Watcher's Gift because it makes you a bit tanky, while Traveler's Shoes if you got Mark of the Vanguard because you, know, because you don't need Mark of the Vanguard and Reinforced Boots at once, that seems a bit much. And then either Serenity or Stone of Gaia, once again you know what Stone of Gaia is, that's for all the magic users. There's five people on the other team, what are they mostly? Are they mostly magical or are they mostly physical? You gotta build around that. Who's gonna be the biggest threat? Who do you want to focus on? Build to combat that. There's a new item called Heartward Amulet. It seems to be in the core of most supports builds now. It gives you 300 health and 60 magical protection. The passive is that all allies within 70 units gain 20 physical protections and 20 magic per 5 seconds. This is just a great item for a support to have. In the team fights, you'll be around your teammates a lot and you should be around a lot of magic being used. So if you can protect your teammates with that extra 20 physical protections, then that's great. I'm not sure about replacing this for Stone of the Guy, I haven't really seen many people do that. Stone of the Guy it just gives you so much health. And then after that, either Spirit's Robe or Magi's Blessing, it depends on the god. Spirit's Robe, I've talked about that, it's great. 
Magi's Blessing is also good because it absorbs a crowd control ability. So Anubis can come up to you and mummify you or Ymir can use his freeze on you and then that won't do anything. They'll just get rid of the bubble which has a cooldown and that will come back. It's kind of like a mini active but it's an item. It's, it's weird but it's cool. Hand of the God is almost, yeah, definitely always, always, always get Hand of the Gods if you are support. And while at the start you hog the purple camp for your carry. Level that up to tier 3 and you can hog the fire giant and the gold fury with it. Wards, 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 wards. As support you are expected to ward far more than anyone else in, on your team. Don't leave your hunter alone without being warded. It's up to you to keep them safe and if you can't be there then make sure your wards are. Now support, it's one of the most unique roles in Smite I believe. It's never really defined what exactly support has to do and thanks to this new meta of the Midas boots not being there it means support has to roam a lot less now. There's actually been a change by the distance where you get gold and experience. It used to be 80 feet I believe and now it's 60 feet. So that means you'll be roaming less and you'll be hanging around your carry a lot more. But wherever you go, you're in the soul lane, the jewel lane or the middle lane or you see a jungler doing a camp. Go near them, get some experience and you'll level up a bit. Also near the jewel lane is the gold fury. I like it when the carry wards the gold fury while you concentrate on warding the fire giant. But this new gold fury is awesome. She flies around at the start of the map. She doesn't have any special attacks like the Fire Giant does, unfortunately. It's just a normal tank and spank. Once you do get aggro on the Gold Fury, don't drag it towards the enemy's side of the map. Drag it to your own side. That means they just have to try and get there and it's just a little bit harder for them. Now, if you have Tier 3 of Hand of Gods, which you have to get more money with it and you can't stay with, and you can't afford at level 1, once you have tier 3, you need to time your Hand of Gods at the right time. That's around 25% of the Gold Fury's health, the same with the Fire Giant. Once the health bar of that boss turns yellow, then hog straight away. And if you don't, the other team will do that and they will steal it. And that can change the game, so be aware of that. And finally, the carry. Now, if I was going to say this meta was made for one god, it would have to be Zhibalanke because last patch or the last meta nobody picked nobody picked Ribalanka. He was kind of a joke god. He was just so bad at clearing waves. He always had mana issues and he was never really changed to fit that meta. Now the meta has changed and it suits him amazingly well. Maybe too well. You might need a nerf in future. But the starting meta is similar to the dual lane. You start at the red buff, give that to your middle laner, then you go to the purple buff and get that for yourself. Then get to the lane fast, push it up. Now your support should be damaging the creeps while you get the finishing blow. This is to make sure that you get more experience and you get more gold because the key to the game is, at least as a hunter, is that you need to get to level 20 as soon as possible because you do the most damage out of anyone. Just think of the rest of your four teammates. They are there as support and utility and a lot of area of effect. You are there to take out targets, like single target damage. You just knock everyone off one by one. Carries at the moment seem to be built two different ways. Bluestone Pendant is, is a great item, it's a new starter item which gives you a lot of mana, it gives you a bit of sustain. If you don't get that then you people usually get Transcendence. I like Transcendence especially on Zhibalanke, like I said he was a very mana hungry god. He still is kind of fuller, he does really well with Transcendence as well. Then the second item, get either Ninja Tabby if you got Transcendence, if not Devourer's Gloves if you got Bluestone Pendants. Devourer's Gloves that just helps you with that life steal. If you yeah. did go the Transcendence route then you get Asai third. You could get Devourer's Gloves as a third item or you could even get it second and then get your Ninja Tabby third. Uh, it's up to you. And then the fourth item is this item called the Ichival? Ikival? Ikival? Oh god I hate it. How do you say it? This item is great for hunters. Attack power and penetration. It seems to make up for the missing warrior tabby. Then executioner, I, I'm not even going to talk about the stats, just just get it. It is made for hunters. A hunter which doesn't have executioner on is not a hunter. Get it, every single time. And then at the moment the scariest hunters are all using crit builds and that includes rage and deathbringer. Now yes this is seven items that I've shown on this. So you got to sell an item. Sell bluestone pendant or transcendence or maybe assai. With this build I was hitting for over 500 a hit. That's like, that means I could kill a god in 3 or 4 hits. It's insane. Now because of this new map, all these changes to god's abilities, there are tier lists of course, because it's a MOBA. People like ranking things in order, based on their overall effectiveness and what they believe to be balanced and what isn't balanced. 
I've kind of copied the pros and commentators and all that. I use their tiers, but I've also changed it to my own style. I've also ranked some gods which are hard to use just a little bit lower, because like I said, this video is for the average casual player of Smite. The average person can't dominate when they're playing as Circuit, but they can dominate if they're playing as Thor, or they will at least have a far better chance. Up the top, Hercules, Osiris, Alquang, Janus, great gods at the moment, good sustain, good power, good damage. Then S tier when gods start being caught overpowered, Jibalanke is there, you can also see Kronos which is insane at the moment, Cupid right next to him, Thanatos and Hunbats also there. Gods need to clear waves on their own, and if they are also built well for the early game then they will just dominate easily. Thanatos is pretty good in the early game and Hunbats is just good all over the place. The A tier is where a god is scored balanced as far as I'm concerned. You would see a lot of supports are here. Sylvanas is probably the best there because he can heal his teammates. Though don't underestimate Ymir, Ymir is a great bully in the lane if you know how to play him right. Kukulkan, more powerful than it was a month or two ago because of that extra tick he has. B tier is where gods start getting a bit more underpowered and not picked as often. These are more niche picks. If someone picks a certain god, you can usually counter them by picking a god from B tier, and apart from that, these are not a high priority pick. Thanks to the change to Aegis, Anubis isn't completely useless now. He can do a lot more damage, but people can still pick Shield of the Underworld, and Anubis can really hurt himself with that. Same with Zeus. Nox isn't as powerful as what she was last month. She has had her abilities changed a bit. And look at this, Neith and her and Apollo. The hunters have swapped sides. Usually it was Jibalanke, Cupid and Ulla there. Now it's almost completely reversed. Their wave clear really does suck compared to what it used to be, and the auto attack focused gods obviously do much more damage. And finally down the bottom, C tier. That's where Odin and Bacchus are because they are just so mana hungry at the moment. They can be effective, just not very often. So there you go, a basic breakdown of the smite meta. As of the 13th of February 2015. I'm gonna make more of these videos in future, whenever a new god is released or there's been a huge patch which changes the meta. Because I'm sure you know like I do that MOBAs scare people. They jump in and they don't know what to do. They are overwhelmed by everything. They don't know where to start. They don't know what to build. What god does what. And people rage at them. This is a new meta. This is going to happen to everyone which listens to this video. People are going to rage. But I hope this helps you so you know what's going on. And maybe you can share that to people who you want to know what's going on. So no one is left behind. If you want to subscribe to me, I'll post these videos in the future. You can follow me on Twitter. I use Facebook too. And I'm always looking for information about the new meta, how things change, how things are going to change, what works, what doesn't. I'm not a professional smite player, I'm not a mathematician, a commentator, I'm just a casual player of smite, which can make videos to help people. So I hope that does, and I'll see you at the next one.